philosophy, not rule law, principles, what is right. In today's video, we shall be taking a look at these. Bioethics, brief introductions, with Eric Manuel Torres. Ethics is one of the four main branches of philosophy concerning the study of right and wrong. Within ethics, we find bioethics. Bioethics, as much of ethics in general, is applied or practical, as opposed to being purely theoretical. To know what is right is one thing. To do what is right is something else. Something not just requiring knowledge, but virtue, particularly courage. Knowledge alone cannot perfect our relationship with God or with our fellow man. Philosophy is not to be understood as pointless or frivolous musing, but rather as the love of wisdom, philosophia. That is, the pursuit of knowledge for its very sake, and this includes all the sciences. Science being any systematically organized body of knowledge. The other three main branches of philosophy are epistemology, the study of knowledge and of knowing, logic, the study of rational thought and decodification rules, and metaphysics, the study of the fundamental nature of things and reality. Ethics is the study of morality and ergo of our moral conduct. Moreover, According to natural law, morality can be understood via reason. Here, it is worth having a quick look at natural law. Natural law is an ethical system and a legal theory that holds that our rights and human goods are inherent by virtue of our human nature, and that these are discoverable and understandable such that our teleology, that is, our ends, are deducible via the use of reason alone. In other words, all things in nature, including us, human beings, have a purpose or meaning, a direction or aim, an aspiration which is not dependent on the subject, but rather is inbuilt. Although, Natural law ought not to be confused with laws of nature. Certain laws of nature can be illustrative to gain some insight into natural law. For instance, the law of universal gravitation, gravity, or the second law of thermodynamics, entropy. By means of analogy, we can see that these laws of nature and natural law share certain common features. Neither of these laws were invented nor made up. Rather, they were discovered. Moreover, our opinion or belief does not affect these laws. One can firmly believe that gravity does not exist, or that one can defy it. But no amount of such belief, no matter how strongly or passionately we felt, can prevent one from plummeting down a precipice. As our understanding of these laws grew, the rules were determined, mainly via empirical observations. In the case of the law of universal gravitation, it was observed that every particle is attracted to every other particle in the universe. With the second law of thermodynamics, that natural processes have a sole direction such that entropy increases. And in terms of natural law, for instance, that we humans share a common nature, human nature, and that thus we have certain common goods in addition to aspirations or goals and inalienable rights. So back to ethics. According to natural law, through reason one can know the principles of ethics and importantly what is right and what is wrong. Therefore, it is possible to develop better or worse answers to ethical challenges. 
Principles, principium in Latin, archaic in Greek, are general starting points or points of origin from which rules and norms derive. Strictly speaking, principles cannot be justified, otherwise they will not be starting points. Nor can an infinite regression of justification exist. Although not blindly, principles are accepted at face value. In natural law, the first principle is twofold. To cite the 13th century philosopher, theologian and doctor of the church, St. Thomas Aquinas, good is to be done and pursued, and evil is to be avoided. To end this video, let us ask, what is right? According to natural law, what is right is what leads us to our ultimate end. Anything that is for the sake of an end is good, insofar that it achieves that end. Bad, insofar as it does not achieve it. For example, a shopping axe is for the sake of cutting down trees. Hence, to cut down trees is its end. If it cuts trees down, it is a good chopping axe. However, if the chopping axe cannot cut down trees, it is a bad chopping axe. The ultimate end is the end for which all other ends lead, the end which is done for its sake alone, the end or good which completely terminates and satisfies appetite. In the case of man, our ultimate end is happiness. St. Thomas Aquinas states that to desire happiness is nothing else than to desire that one's will be satisfied, and this everyone desires. In saying that happiness is man's ultimate end, it implies that our human needs demand to be properly placed in a hierarchy of importance, such that the less important are subordinate to the more important. Let us end with a quote from another philosopher, theologian and doctor of the church, St. Augustine of Hippo. A happy life is joy in the truth, for this is joy in you who art the truth, referencing John 14, 6. Thank you.